Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial how to model a toy water can in Shaper 3D. In this video I will show you how to use a 3D scan as a dimensional blueprint to model over. I will explain how I analyze the scan to identify geometry features and thus try to envision the best approach for creating all the sketches for which then I will model the final design. Before we get started, let's set up our scene. The unit system should be set to millimeters. All the snapping tools should be turned on. This file will be shared with you. You can make a copy to follow this video. I would simply select all the files and delete them. Okay, now we are ready to get started. Before we get started putting down sketches and then trying to rebuild this design, it's a good tip to step back and look at this bigger problem and dissect it into the smaller problems. This will then give us some clues in how we could approach everything in the most effective way. So let's start with a top view. What do we see? Here is an elliptical shape. And based on how much I can see the side, it also tells me that there is a draft to that ellipse. The top of this ellipse is rounded, but I can't really round an ellipse. So how do I build this? And I will show you an interesting trick how we can uh, do that. The top also has three interesting cuts. That tells me I need to do these cuts before I do the shelling. Also, there is an opening. So I can draw that shape. I see that opening from the side that the top of the handle to the bottom gets actually wider. That's also something to keep in mind. So this line here at one point needs to be at an angle. Very good. And the spout, well, that's a very easy shape. It's just a circular, um, uh, it's a circle, and then we revolve it. Very good. So I'm back in the top view. And while I mentioned the ellipse will be problematic, I will still show you what I was talking about with the ellipse. So here is our ellipse. From the top view, that looks actually pretty good. While we zoom in, you can see that this seems not really to be done with an ellipse anyway. Okay. So then we can move this one up, maybe to there. And let's see to what degree do we have to rotate it. Five, what about four? Yeah, five maybe. And we can expand this a little bit. Okay, now there we see even more the problem that this might not be a true ellipse. Anyway, so we could still make a case, yeah, this is all fine. No, this is actually a nicer shape because it's truly an ellipse. We know the top is nicely rounded. And, well, we can round an ellipse top or cap. However, you noticed, we will run into some issues. There, the surface is, well, that's just an ellipse, no? We're trying to fill it. So what can we do differently? The solution is actually fairly simple. We'll go to sketch, make a circle. Again, from the center, draw a circle out and I make it a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger because I will add later a fillet and that will shrink everything a tick. Then I move this to the right side. Okay, very good. Here, we'll do the same. We will extrude this one up to there. Round, uh, not round it, 
taper it five degree very good and the top I can fill it nicely there okay now you would say uh, well this is off center how is this supposed to work well I need two of those so there's my object number one go to a side view mirror tap on the screen and mirror it across the construction plane okay now I have two double tapping each and we select find the intersecting volume and there we are look at that pretty good the sharp corner here or edge we can round so it looks good there we are okay we can see now that I'm that my model is a little bit smaller than the actual scan so that means that the initial circle I created needs to be a tick bigger so this is 74 maybe with 80 millimeters because I have to accommodate for the fact that I'm shrinking everything when I will add also here this fillet I will not repeat this step I will simply point this out so we can time-wise move forward in this tutorial but this would be a common try out to see which which size of the circle etc will be required to find something that matches the scan okay now with this done we could round this a little bit yeah, that looks that looks fine inside this because it's time to look at the opening from the side and the back we'll start here I will draw a line now I will turn grid snapping off because I want this to be more freely movable there this looks pretty good then I can turn grid snapping back on there we are very nice so this object I will extrude and then we adjust the thickness to the other side very good and also here I need two of those so side view mirror tap on the screen let's double check is everything symmetrical yes it is very good so I will not round these corners now I will do all this later select the water can select these two objects they are used to be uh, as a cutting tool so select subtract done there we are very nice the reason why I keep the sketch very simple is it's easy to work with and roundings I can add as you can see later so I make myself more work by doing detailed sketches when that's not necessary so I need to do a sketch also from the side and I want to hit the correct height so that is actually 90 millimeters off the ground so that is good to keep in mind this now I will call handle front you can call this uh, circle base go to the left view and just draw somewhere a line draw a line snap to the grid center point lock it make this vertical this is horizontal and this I will set to 90 and now I positioned the lower edge exactly where I want it to be very nice To help a little bit with positioning everything I can select this edge 
then go to more project with the pencil tap on the screen select done and there you see i projected in this curve so now i have this as a reference that's going to be pretty useful this i could try to offset And when we do an offset, there we can see that from here to here, that matches. But then from there to there, the handle gets thinner. Same on the right side. So it's not actually a clear offset. So that is, that is good to know. So how do we do this? Pretty easy. Go to spline, control point, and I need to have well, probably one, two, three, four points. Select the two points, select symmetry, and then we select the line. This way we added a symmetry constraint to these two control points, and you see how easy it is now to adjust all this. This sketch I will remove, I mean curve, I can turn on this scan and play around, position everything till I get something that looks good. Okay, very nice. So. I have here another profile, which I can extrude 80, 160. There is now that object. You see everything perfectly is flush. That is very good. So from this, I would like to remove this. And there we are. You see how easy it is to um, remove everything. It's a very structured approach. We can call this handle site. And we don't need to see it anymore. Before we do the spout, maybe a little bit more of extra work. When I would like to round these two edges or this loop, I need to round this corner first. When I do this, then it's very easy to select this and round it. Well, there you can see it should, uh, I have to go really small, it sh will work. But as you see, there were some issues with the software or the code. That was not the problem of the software. I was simply, this is a very bad situation. So. The reason why I'm pointing this out is now we need to figure out hmm, what is the best filleting strategy here. So to round this loop, I need this to be rounded, but this maybe has to go around here. Oops, to there and there. But to do that in a nice, smooth way, I need these edges to be rounded too. So this is actually where I have to start. So we round this, okay. Then we can round this here. This can be nice and big. And then we should be able to round this if everything works. There we are. Look how beautiful, nice and smooth. So you see, it's really very often comes down to understanding the correct, where do we do something? So six, and then here we do six two. Okay, nice. Since we are at the base, let's continue our work we can turn on this so because there is 
another element we need to do with the ellipse command. You can see if this works out. So I will turn this off. Bring this down. Looks like this has to be wider. So maybe 20 by 8. Very nice. Then we can make a copy of this. How do we rotate it? So 8 and 20. Lock this. And there, see then this way we can rotate it. And then we move it right to where we need it to. Sometimes it's good. Moving them a little bit that way and that way. So, okay. This is all the, the sketches I need. Then 41, this is then 82. And this one, I need to mirror over to here. So I switch to this view. That's the reason why the sketch only had two ellipses, not three. And then the same process. First the target, then the three tools, subtract. And there we are. Now nicely, we can still adjust everything afterwards a little bit. But I would always be very careful with this because direct modeling sometimes works, sometimes does not work. It's all based on the complexity of our design. In this case here, it was a little bit more, uh, more touchy. So what I will do, because I can see that the ellipse here is deeper in than there. So this whole object, I will simply move down just a little bit more. So maybe minus 0.5. Very good. And we can compare how does this look to the other three. That's close. And subtract. Okay. Very nice. And these fillets we can round. Good. One warning about filleting is always try to not fillet everything from the beginning. Try to fill it only when you need to do it because fillets in general can slow down the calculation. Because every time when I now do something to this model, it will add it to this whole object with all the fillets. So for right now, for example, to make things a tick faster, I simply, I went to undo, or in case you want to later remove a fillet, we can simply select the fillet and hit delete. You can always add fillets again. Fillets kind of like are two things. They are a finishing touch and they also are a design feature. So when they're a design feature, you really need to put them in when they're a uh, a finishing touch, do this later. Okay, so we have an opening here. Select the top face with your finger double tap. Then we can turn on cut section, the lower right corner. Let me see where is this, okay. And the grid was not turned on. Two lines, an arc there and there. That should work. 
there, and then no u to u be equal. There we are. Very good. Let me make this 80 or 70. You can see how easy that works. We can also pull in an edge to see how close we are, and we are pretty, pretty, pretty good. Doing this projection in showed me that here we are a little bit off. So this point has to go over. You notice the more you add constraints, sometimes the, um, the solver can be your friend or can also be your your enemy. So how do we how do we fix this? Sometimes, honestly, the fastest way is just redo it. The amount of time sometimes it takes to fix something is more than it would simply take to rebuild it. There. And there we said this was 70. These two together equal. There we are. Cool. So this I will keep for the moment because we can't cut this yet. We need to hollow our design. And before we can hollow it, we need to add our spout. So let's do that now. We can call this water opening. There we are. Okay. So how do we do the spout? I know I have a line at the center. That's for the revolve. Okay. And be careful. You see, I <laughs> oh, I drew this line it's an, at an interesting angle. That happened because I started drawing on the mesh. So draw somewhere outside and draw into the mesh. Okay. And then I will bring this down a little bit. I will bring one line to here. Turn off the grid snapping. So there and there. This looks good. This I will snap to the midpoint. These two lines I will make perpendicular to each other. This I will lock. I will draw another line here and make this connected to the midpoint. Again, perpendicular. As you can see now, I have kind of like a measurement tool. And it seems I am pretty close the way how this all got positioned. Okay, good. So this line now I can remove. This was just a test. Then I can extend this. This looks like a line. Connect this and spline control. There, there, and there. Then the spline to the line tangent. And here now I can move this around till it seems everything looks good. Also here with the control point spline, least amount of points as possible. Less work, cleaner surfaces. Okay, so that looks nearly good. I don't know if I like how here this has such a strong sharp edge. We can make this tangent. Then this needs to be not uh, locked. This point, however, I will lock, so I will not adjust. And this point now, I can move down. You see here, this point moves with it. And this now turns out this spline needs one, two, three, four, five points. Okay, so I delete it. One for the tangent, one for the arc, one for the tangent, one for the end. So 
See, with this one now, I can nicely shape this. Very good. Okay, so this we can push back a little bit. Lock it, so it doesn't move. I don't use the dimensioning for the, the well, I don't add the dimension. I simply lock the points so the sketch doesn't adjust. Very good. Now this will revolve around this line. Very good. Here is now my water can. Select all this union. Very nice. This needs to have a sharp edge. Sorry, a, uh, a round edge. So this is a design feature, not just a finishing element. So I add this now. And let's do the shelling. So this object I would like to shell, which means, okay, I'm ready for shelling. These edges need to be filleted again. Then this is a flat surface. Shell two, milli two millimeters, might be a lot. One millimeter, so I will keep it at two so it's also easier to see. Let's take a look. That looks fabulous. You also can see here how the these cuts are now shelled to the inside. This all looks fantastic. Here is my opening. That now I can push in. There is my opening. Beautiful. Side everything. This edge and this edge plus this and this edge way round. Rounding here is important so it doesn't break. Very good. Now the, the spout is open, we need to put something in there. We can go to our cut section view again from the side. We handle site. Okay, there we are. So there's our scan. We can extend this line here because this point and this point, they are locked. This line cannot rotate, meaning this can simply be tangent and this won't rotate. Move this one down. Now we need an arc. From there to there. There we are. And I will draw a line and connect it to this sharp point there. My arc here, I need to make sure that the midpoint is on this line. Now I moved it and now it is perfect. So why did I do this? Very simple. If I select this and then do a revolve around here, as you can see, this is a perfect dome right at this point here. This arc is tangent to there. That's the reason why it was important that this arc has its midpoint on this line. So it revolves symmetrical. Very good. So we can round this here. This we shall. There's the shell command, two millimeters. Very good. Go back to a cut section view and a side view. Let's take a look at our object. Okay, so there we are. This tells me, so here we can extrude this a little bit. 
this probably will be perpendicular. Yes, it is. 2.1 millimeter, make it a little bit bigger. Then from here to here, that should be two point. Uh, this is not actually what I want. So how do I get that uh, material in there? Well, we can make this two millimeters. That is fine. So here to there, two millimeters. Very good. Also there to there, that should be tangent. Uh, sorry, I meant perpendicular. Then this goes in, goes over maybe like this and goes back. Let's connect all this. So you see we created a very basic snapping mechanism. rotate this a little bit it does not want to do this so hmm. this line was acting kind of funny so one and let's do it this way there we are okay so this we will revolve along this there we are and then these two we join this is a little bit dirty. We can chamfer this and then we can billet it. So there we have a small lock, mechanical locking mechanism. So we can force it in and then the piece will stay shut. Very good. No, there's no water coming out. And how do we cut these holes perfectly in there? That's not the last piece I'm going to show you quickly. It's very easy to do with all the sketches we have already created. So along this sketch line, I would like to create a construction plane. And it should be perpendicular to edge. like this. Okay. And this construction plane, I can select, move my widget, and then I move this a little bit further away, select it with my finger double tap. And now, let me check this out. I l am looking right at it perpendicular onto that cap. Super, no? to figure out where is my my center point. I draw here a diagonal, diagonal. Okay, so there's my center point. So from here, yeah, that looks all perfectly centered to the circle. So that means we will make one circle from here, two millimeters. Two millimeters is a little bit big, but I will simply keep this a tick bigger so it's easier to see. Then we make a copy and make another copy. I will simplify this a little bit so uh, we don't, because we are slowly soon running out of time. I like to keep this nice and brief. And this I will extrude in. When you see then it does a cut. That's not what I want. I uh, simply create a new body. So I just made the bodies. And I do here the same, but there I can cut because this is now perpendicular, but you see from the side, this is not perpendicular. So here's a little trick. I can select all this. So if I would like to be physically more correct, 
then I rotate this, double tap, rotate this there, and I try to rotate them so it looks like they are sitting perpendicular on this arc. Okay. Now, all this I need to hide. Number one. Number two, we need copies. Move the 3D widget onto this rotation axis. Pretty cool. Copy. You can also type this in. You really go 180. So with two copies, we have actually then four. Go copy one more time. Now we can go 90. Now we have eight. And you see how easy it is to quickly create these patterns. And 90 divided by two, 45. Wow, that's pretty nice. So you also see in our outliner here, this is getting really full. So let's select all those. We, we can drag them and put them into the first one. And you see, then this is actually one big folder. And I can select all at the same time. That is now super useful because I can select this, go to more, subtract and now I select the folder and it selects all the objects and click done. And there we are. Beautiful. Now all these um, are removed. You see this folder now is, is empty. So we can delete it and maybe from, from this one the way how we created it, we want to make more copies so we can put some in here to there. But we want them to be really the same. So I will do the following. You see, I went backwards and select all those and I make one more copy. And 45 divided by two is 22.5, no, so 22.5, suck. No, the outer ring is better. So there we are, beautiful. This we can call water um, holes. And do the same here, so it makes sense. This folder can, can go, we don't need it anymore. This is our cap. And this is our water can. Let's clean up everything a little bit. We make a folder, all our sketches we will put in there. So I can easily see them or hide them. Very nice. So the last thing missing is here. This edge is very wobbly and we might want to protect this a little bit. So how could we reinforce it? I can go back to a cut section like this, go then to sketch, circle, and I add a circle and make the circle a little bit bigger. So it's on top, on bottom, very good. Then this circle volume I need to select. So pay attention to you see here this was missing and then I select all these edges and say sweep. There we are. Very nice. And 
select all, join. And we added it to it. So now this is reinforced. Very good. And that is the way how from a rather coarse scan like this, we can then recreate a very nice inkling cat model of a water can that has an elliptical base, but has a round or circular filleted top handle.